XE engines for around 20 years. First reversible head XE I've been able to stand in front of. touring cars we're obviously supporting jim in his chassis number one cavalier but what's turned up is jim's his number one cavalier off the production line as we've seen in a previous video was rear wheel drive and this one is the very last cavalier ever built and for a, a, a engine enthusiast for the Vauxhall series he's got the swindon reversible head so let's grab the camera let's dive in and let's look what makes this engine so special I've been doing these engines, the XE engines, for around 20 years. And this here is the first reversible head XE I've been able to stand in front of and have the opportunity to kind of lean over, touch and poke. So let's dive in. So when I say reversible head, anyone who knows these engines will know the inlet manifold is normally at the back and the exhaust manifold is normally at the front. But what Swindon Racing did, they took from what I can look at here from diving in and looking, an original C20 XE cylinder head and basically machined the, the, the blank casting to have the exhaust at the back, inlet at the front. So basically it gives like a ram air effect. That was the, what I can gather was the essentials. That was the main difference on these engines and what made it so special. I've dived in and looked at the cylinder head and leaned around and had a good look as, as, as you, uh, any Vauxhall engine enthusiast would. But if you look, the casting's almost identical with all the little casting marks, even down the back with these casting marks, they're all the same. The head is literally a GM cast machine to fit. Then if you look to assist this back casing, they've machined two aluminium spacers, which basically space the pulleys out from the cams so it runs flush with the bottom pulley that side is obviously it's got a cam sensor with the coil the block looks basically the external casting looks identical to a standard casting nothing nothing fancy does have steel crank does have Corilla rods does have Cos Cosworth pistons cylinder head work inside not too sure but that's obviously where we're up to with that other little fun quirks for this engine is this here is the power steering pump and if you dive in it's a BMW part you can just see the bmw sign there so it's a bmw part everything's on wiggins clamps which are really nice so obviously it doesn't really blow water pipes off it's on slider throttle bodies rather than flat throttle bodies this yellow lead was for like a for toker so they could basically dial into the car plug in and inspect that no tomfoolery was being done you wasn't changing the map everything was as it should be to stand in front of this after 25 years is amazing even looking at jim's engine on, on the first one you can literally see we've just got the breather which on jim's is on this side really nice to be able to stand in front of this and have a good look around remote oil filter which obviously is dry sump as we know stunning everything is just really really nicely done and it's really interesting to know that it was an original gm casting but machine to be reversible rather than some one-off casting that swindon had done so it's been a nice opportunity to dive in and have a good look at this engine whilst we're putting the slicks on i thought i'd dive in and try and sneak a bit of an under art shot of this this version as you can see different start motor placement they have these rated water pipe clips kind of they've got, they've got wiggins wiggins clamps to hold all the water system on and i think this is still on the extract gearbox full tube at the bottom arm still and as i said twin calipers with uh, which are water cooled beautiful beautiful setup again very different to gyms we were listening on the video different kind of fuel setup which is obviously still the auto kind of the quick fill feeds in feeds into the tank the back end's slightly different and like i say this is all about the progression of the car of how far it's come over the years so again you can see it's still on all the like bladed rose jointed arms but they are very very different to gyms all reinforced all strengthened bladed anti-roll bar still slightly different oil cooler at the back dry sump kit remote canister suspension 
this is very higher spec built than chassis number one which obviously you kind of expect with the development of the car over the years but it's really nice to have been able to poke around chassis number one and see how that one's been built and then now to have just have a kind of just stand in front and have a poke around the very last chassis cavalier and see the comparison between the two and as i said earlier the electronics pack is very very superior to chassis number one there's a lot more going on old school uh, ignition coils what looks like marek morelli i can't think i'll pronounce it now uh map sensor i used to i used to run a web at alpha kit on some throttle bodies i own so again the technology's definitely moved on from the early chassis as you can see everything's gone for more strength with all these additional strengthening bars everywhere which go all the way up and what you what i do find interesting to be fair the tubing is very very thin there's a lot of it it does look like it's probably like 20 mil tube and an interesting one which has come up quite recently in a lot of conversations is if you look this is a genuine touring car Vauxhall factory built type of thing and all the welds are spot stop spot stop spot stop so it goes to show that that will happily pass regulations now people do slag that off but again interesting one to, to you know for people to debate as you can even see there non-continuous runs all spot welded again never seen this before an additional dash bar which goes up from this bottom corner the cage is far superior in this one to chassis number one it's been a, been an honor to be able to look at this i wonder why there is only one air jack in the middle so you've got the two in the front corners and one in the middle it must be a balancing act interesting very very interesting to get an up up person and close inside here obviously the full package all the dashboard obviously has been changed but this has been kept as original as possible to the factory build as it was so i'm going to wrap this one up only a quick video because i didn't expect to film this car it was more coming to film us racing for the day but being able to stand in front of a swindon reversible head engine being able to have a nosy round of where the cavaliers started and where the cavaliers gone is, is you know it's, it's once in a lifetime opportunity and you have to take that opportunity so we'll sign this one off thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one